Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're taking a somber journey through time, remembering five remarkable individuals who left an indelible mark on our world, and who, by coincidence, all passed away on June 29th of their respective years. Let's dive in and celebrate their lives and legacies. Catherine Hepburn died June 29, 2003. Catherine Hepburn wasn't just an actress, she was a cultural icon. Born in 1907, Hepburn's career spanned an astounding six decades. She made her mark not just through her performances, but through her fierce independence and unconventional attitude, which challenged the norms of her time. Hepburn's film debut came in 1932 with a bill of divorcement, and she quickly rose to stardom. Some of her most memorable roles include her performances in Bringing Up Baby, The Philadelphia Story, and The African Queen. What truly set Hepburn apart was her record-breaking four Academy Awards for Best Actress. She won for Morning Glory in 1933, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner in 1967, The Lion in Winter in 1968, and On Golden Pond in 1981. This achievement remains unmatched to this day. Hepburn's influence extended beyond her acting. She was known for her independent spirit, often wearing trousers at a time when it was controversial for women to do so. She once said, if you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. This attitude made her a role model for generations of women. When Hepburn passed away in 2003, the world lost not just a great actress, but a trailblazer who helped reshape societal norms and expectations. Lena Horne died June 29, 2010. Lena Horne was a pioneer in every sense of the word. Born in 1917, she broke racial barriers in the entertainment industry and used her platform to fight for civil rights. Horne began her career as a chorus girl at the Cotton Club in Harlem when she was only 16. Her big break came in 1943 when she starred in the all-black musical Stormy Weather. The title song became her signature piece and one of the most popular recordings of the 1940s. What made Horn truly remarkable was her refusal to play stereotypical roles often assigned to black actors at the time. She was one of the first African Americans to sign a long-term contract with a major Hollywood studio, MGM, but she often found herself edited out of films when they were shown in the South. Horn's activism was as significant as her artistry. She was a prominent figure in the civil rights movement, participating in the 1963 March on Washington and working with organizations like the NAACP. She once said, I'm not a crusader. I'm not a leader. I'm an entertainer. But I became a symbol, and I couldn't help it. In her later years, Horn continued to perform and inspire. Her one-woman show, Lena Horn, The Lady and Her Music, won a special Tony Award and ran for more than 300 performances on Broadway. When Lena Horn passed away in 2010, she left behind a legacy not just of beautiful music, but of courage and determination in the face of adversity. Jim Marshall died June 29, 2012. If you've ever been to a rock concert, you've almost certainly seen and heard Jim Marshall's legacy. Known as the father of loud, Marshall revolutionized the music industry with his guitar amplifiers. Born in 1923 in London, Marshall's journey to becoming a music industry icon was unconventional. He started as a drummer and drum teacher. In 1960, he opened a music shop in London, where he sold drums and guitars. It was here that he noticed a gap in the market for guitar amplifiers. In 1962, Marshall and his team created the first Marshall amp. The sound it produced was exactly what rock guitarists had been looking for loud, with a rich, warm distortion. The Marshall sound quickly became synonymous with rock and roll. Some of the biggest names in rock music became devoted users of Marshall amps. Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, and Pete Townshend were early adopters. The sight of a wall of Marshall amps behind a band became an iconic image of rock concerts. Marshall's impact on music can't be overstated. He didn't just create a product. He helped shape the sound of entire genres of music, rock, metal, and even some forms of pop music owe a debt to the Marshall sound. When Jim Marshall passed away in 2012, musicians around the world mourned.
His amps had given voice to their musical visions, and his innovative spirit had helped drive rock music forward for decades. Joel Schumacher died June 29, 2020. Joel Schumacher's journey in Hollywood was as colorful and diverse as the films he created. Born in New York City in 1939, Schumacher initially worked in the fashion industry before transitioning to film. Schumacher's directorial debut came in 1981 with The Incredible Shrinking Woman, but it was his 1985 film Street Elma's Fire that put him on the map. This coming-of-age drama, featuring the brat pack of young actors, became a cultural touchstone for a generation. Throughout his career, Schumacher demonstrated remarkable versatility. He directed dark, gritty films like Falling Down and 8mm, alongside more mainstream fare like The Client and A Time to Kill. He even ventured into the world of musicals with his film adaptation of The Phantom of the Opera. Perhaps Schumacher's most famous or infamous contributions to cinema were his two Batman films. Batman Forever in 1995 and Batman and Robin in 1997. While these films were commercially successful, they were polarizing among fans and critics, particularly for their campier tone compared to previous Batman films. Despite the mixed reception of his Batman films, Schumacher continued to work prolifically, directing episodes of high-profile TV shows and returning to smaller independent films in his later years. When Joel Schumacher passed away in 2020, Hollywood lost a director who wasn't afraid to take risks and who brought a unique visual style to every project he touched. Benny Spellman died June 29, 2011. While Benny Spellman might not be a household name like some of our other subjects, his contribution to the New Orleans R&B scene of the 1960s was significant. Born in 1931 in Pensacola, Florida, Spellman moved to New Orleans in the 1950s, where he became part of the city's vibrant music scene. His deep baritone voice made him stand out, and he soon found work as both a lead and backing vocalist. Spellman's biggest hit came in 1962 with Lipstick Traces on a Cigarette, which reached the top 30 on the R&B charts. The B-side of this record, Fortune Teller, also became a minor hit and was later covered by several prominent rock bands, including The Who and The Rolling Stones. What many people might not realize is that Spellman's voice is also heard on other classic New Orleans R&B hits. He provided the distinctive baritone on Ernie Cado's number one hit Mother-in-Law, singing the title phrase throughout the song. While Spellman's time in the spotlight was relatively brief, his influence on the New Orleans sound was lasting. He continued to perform at festivals and events, celebrating New Orleans music well into his later years. When Benny Spellman passed away in 2011, the music world lost a voice that had helped define the sound of an era and a city. And there you have it, five remarkable individuals who all happened to leave us on June 29th. Each of these individuals left an indelible mark on our culture. Their legacies continue to influence and inspire us today. As we remember them, let's celebrate the passion, creativity, and dedication they brought to their respective fields. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time and talent. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And let us know in the comments which of these remarkable individuals you'd like to learn more about. Until next time, keep celebrating the arts and the talented individuals who shape our world.